<clears throat> okay, so this is an advanced level class. We're going to be discussing the grammar skill of the past perfect. Um, for our discussion topic, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, piracy and music downloads and exactly where the lines are drawn because nowadays most people get their music digitally. We all download our music. We, most of us don't go to the record store or the music store anymore and buy CDs. So we're going to talk a little bit about is this something that's still considered stealing like it was when people first started doing it? Is, is there a gray area? Is it all stealing? Is it all is it all okay? You know, how do we know? How do we judge this with our moral compass? So, as soon as we get some students in class, we'll go ahead and get started. And until then, I'm going to turn off the camera and wait.
<clears throat> okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So let's get into our discussion of the past perfect. Excuse me. So it says, first, the past perfect tense allows you to talk about one event that happened in the past before another event that happened in the past. It shows which event occurred first and which event occurred second. The structure, subject, excuse me, subject plus had plus verb in the past participle. His manager invited him to dinner, but he had already eaten. The bus departed at 7 a.m. By the time we arrived, the bus had left. <clears throat> Second, to make a negative sentence in the past perfect tense, you place the word not between had and the past participle. Structure, subject plus had not plus verb in the past participle. She had not seen him for three years. They had not visited me for two years. Third, uh, well, third, you can form the past perfect continuous to show that there was an action in the past that continued to a specific time in the past. Structure, subject plus had been plus verb with the ing ending. So I had been helping her for two hours before Jack arrived. Jenny had been staying inside all day before it stopped raining. So. This is the past perfect continuous, so it's showing that there was an action in the past that continued to a specific time in the past. So I had been helping her for two hours before Jack arrived, so had been helping. That action continued up until the point when Jack arrived. So it continued in the past up until a specific point. Jenny had been staying inside all day before it stopped raining. So Jenny was inside all day up until the point when it stopped raining. When it stopped raining, Jenny went outside. So it's an action that continues in the past up until a specific time, also in the past. So you use past, past perfect continuous to show cause and effect. Jim went to bed early because he had been working all day. She finally had to sit down because she had been walking for two hours. Okay, so that is the past perfect. Let's go on into our article. Stealing music, is it wrong or isn't it? Music used to be so simple. You listened to it on the radio for free, but you didn't get to say what would be played. And there were lots of commercials. If you went to a concert, you paid. And if you bought a record, tape, or CD, you paid. People copied CDs to cassette tapes and passed them on to friends. That was just about as far as a person-to-person -person music piracy got. Stealing music was when you shoplifted a CD or cassette from the record store, and it was pretty clearly understood that it was wrong. Maybe that's why so many people who are older than 30 think that downloading music is ethically wrong. They remember that music is something that you pay for. They still download the music, of course, but they know they're doing something something they shouldn't be doing. But if you discovered and come to love music in the last decade, I don't see how you can be expected to know when listening to recorded music is okay and when it's wrong. Let's put the law aside for a moment. This post is about doing the right thing. We've been hammered with messaging from the government and the music labels that downloading or listening to music on the internet is stealing, unless you pay for it. We see the video clips before movies at the cinema saying it's wrong. We read about lawsuits against 12-year-olds for downloading music from BitTorrent. Our government is even willing to threaten our sovereign nations over music excuse me, piracy. But over the last few years, the line has blurred to the point where there really isn't any line anymore. We can listen to free, on-demand streaming music at MySpace Music and lots of other sites. 
It's okay to do it at MySpace, but it's wrong to do it at Project Playlist. Just because the right contracts aren't in place? Just a couple of years ago, anyone listening to free streaming music anywhere on the internet was violating copyright and subject to being labeled unethical. Today, it's no problem, and you don't even have to listen to audio ads. But downloading music, that's still wrong, right? Nope. If you live in China, you can download music legally from Google for free. No problem. Above, I said I wanted to put the law aside for a moment. Now I'll come back to it. Because the law, and particularly the U.S. government's willingness to perpetuate the absurdity of copyright law as it applies to recorded music, is all that labels have left. No one in their right mind could formulate an argument that downloading music on the Internet is wrong at this point. All the labels have left is the law. Eventually, the reality of the Internet will force the laws to change, too. One way or another, the music labels will eventually surrender and recorded music will be free. Until it is, I refuse to feel guilty for downloading and sharing music. Every time I listen to a song or share it with a friend, I'm doing the labels a favor, one that eventually I should be paid for. Until that day comes, don't even think about trying to tell me that I'm doing something ethically wrong when it's considered quite legal with, labels, with the label's blessing in China. Okay, so that's the article. So we're talking about basically the ethics behind downloading music. So first, let's look at some of the vocabulary. <clears throat> okay. So first, we have cassette tapes, which were around long before CDs. So if you remember what we had before CDs, a little rectangular tape. In English, we call that a cassette tape, which we don't really use anymore, unless you have an old cassette player. But if you want to describe that to somebody in English, we call that a cassette tape. And then, obviously, CDs are pretty self-explanatory. Okay. So when we talk about ethics, we're talking about basically what is right and what is wrong. So what boils down to being right and what is absolutely wrong. So if we say that something is ethically wrong, it may be something that's not illegal, but according to our internal moral compass. So what we naturally know to be right and naturally know to be wrong, it's considered wrong. So if you want to say that something's wrong, just because we all know it is, even if there's no law against it. So, for example, most and there there may not be a law against stealing. In most places there are, but let's say if we lived in a place where there was no law against stealing, if somebody came and took your belongings, that is considered ethically wrong. So, because of who we are inside and what we naturally know to be right and what we naturally know to be wrong, we all understand that to be wrong, even if the law says it's right. So that's what ethics are. It's our internal sense of right and wrong. So in the second, in the first sentence, it says that people who are older than 30 think that downloading music is ethically wrong. So although downloading music is common and there's not really many laws against it, they feel like it is still stealing, which they know to be absolutely wrong. So if you ever want to talk about something that's wrong based on nature, then you can call it ethically wrong. Okay. Let's see. Mm, nothing really fancy in that paragraph. Um, paragraph F. Okay, violating this word. To violate something means, well, if you're violating copyright, it basically means that you've ignored it or that you have worked against the, the law of something. So if you violate a copyright law, it means that you have done something to act against the law. 
streaming, which is technical term. If something is streaming, that's a term that we usually use for like movies, like a movie can be streaming or music can be streaming. Um, that one's actually a little bit harder to to explain, but basically it's something that you can access over the internet um, for free. Most of the time it's for free. But if you need a more specific definition of streaming, I would suggest looking that word up. Okay, so let's look at this paragraph. This is the one I really wanted to get to. In this sentence, now I'll come back to it. Okay, it says, because the law, and particularly the U.S. government's willingness to perpetuate the absurdity of copyright law as it applies to recorded music. So it says to perpetuate the absurdity. Perpetuate means to cause something to continue. So if you perpetuate something, you are the force behind causing something to continue. If something continues on perpetually, it means an ending forever. Um, absurd or absurdity means in, insane, senseless, crazy. So the absurdity of copyright law. So that could, sentence could also read, and particularly the U.S. government's willingness to continue or to cause the craziness of copyright law to continue. So they're perpetuating the absurdity of copyright law or they're causing the craziness or the insanity of copyright law to continue. Okay, um, the word formulate. To formulate something means, basically it comes from the word formula. It means to, to put something together. So I'm putting it very simply. So if you formulate a plan, it means you're bringing a plan together. You're bringing all the parts together. Um, if you formulate for an argument, it means that you are bringing an argument together. You're putting something together. Okay. Um, that's about all the vocabulary that I see in that article that might be new or challenging. So basically the point of the article, I mean you can see clearly from this article this the author's point of view is that that downloading music is not stealing, that it's not wrong and that there really shouldn't be anybody who can tell them that it's ethically wrong because it can be done in some places and not in others. So that's that kind of takes you back to the point of ethics if something is ethically wrong or morally wrong, it can't be acceptable one place and not acceptable another place. It's just absolutely wrong. So, for example, murder. You know, and no place is. Now, I'm not saying people don't murder, but all people everywhere know murder to be absolutely wrong. To kill someone else, especially without reason, is absolutely wrong. To take a life. It's not like it can be acceptable one place. Some people think it's acceptable, other people don't. It's something that internally, as human beings, we know to be wrong. So they're saying that this doesn't boil down to ethics. If the company say it's okay for some people to take the music offline for free, but not for others, then it's not an ethical issue. It's not a moral issue. It's not absolutely wrong because it's acceptable sometimes, which means it boils down to law. It's whether or not the copyright laws will allow people. So are we breaking the law when you download music for free? Yes. But are we violating our ethics or our morals? Maybe not. And that really is personal opinion. You know, for some people, the idea of breaking a law is ethically or morally wrong. Whereas for others, that's not the case. Um, that is from your personal experience or your personal opinion, but the idea behind this article is that it's not it's not an ethical issue, it's not a moral issue, it's just an issue of outdated laws that have been broken or bent in some areas and upheld to a strange degree in other areas. 
So it's really just the music industry's last effort at not losing this revenue. Because, you know, CDs were not cheap. I don't know if you guys remember, but CDs were like $20 a piece. And that was, you know, just regular CDs. If you wanted something like a special edition or like a really popular band, you might pay as much as like $30 or $40. So for people to be downloading all of this music for free, these companies are losing mass amounts of money. I mean, really, they're, they've lost a lot of revenue. So you can see why they would be upset and why they would try to put laws in place to make to stop this from happening. But what this article is saying is that it's an eventuality. You cannot stop this progress because everything is digital. And we download all of our music. And honestly, most people download their music illegally. There's not really anything to contain or control it. So eventually, the laws are going to have to catch up. So that is what that article is about. Um, that don't have any students in class with me right now, so we're going to have to um, discuss this maybe another time. But maybe something you can discuss with your friends, you know, bring it up, see what they feel about it. Do they feel like this is stealing? Do they feel like it's harmless? You know, whatever, what are their thoughts? And just some questions for discussion. I can back to it. Okay. Do you think that it should be illegal to download music? How do you think the situation has changed? Why do you think there are laws against it? How do you usually listen to music yourself personally? And do you think there will ever come a time where th that this issue will be resolved? So maybe take those discussion and questions and discuss it with your friends. Um, it's an interesting topic. It's one that most people have very differing opinions about. And you know, let us know what you think. Leave comments on this on this class, and we'll save this discussion for another day. And again, um, I will be back in. Let's see. Oh, I'll be back at four o'clock Eastern Standard Time, which is one o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Um, for a grammar class, and the discussion topic will be Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. So we're going to discuss one of the most famous books on the battle of the sexes that have ever existed and how men and women can understand each other better to learn to communicate better and just really, in general, why we are so different. So for those of you who are watching, thank you for joining me today. And I'm sorry that we didn't get to get into the discussion as much as I would like. And I hope to see you again soon, and I hope you enjoyed the class.